welcome back everyone to another video and in this one i wanted to go over the haiku os so we'll start i'll go from top the the bootloader and mostly from a user's perspective not really going into the code that much but from the usage and how stable it has become since i last tested it and was like about a year ago uh, and a lot of lot more things work actually so let's let's stop stalling and actually go ahead and boot it here so basically a lot of things happen uh, you know they they were in the google summer of code project so they got a lot of real leverage from there and as you can see i have my fedora installation and then i have the grub uh, and i have haiku installed now uh, all you have to do to boot haiku from grub is to chain load the uh, haiku E EFI bootloader and it handles the rest automatically without uh, adding anything else to it. Uh, you can also execute the EFI file from your UEFI BIOS directly, so there's no need for uh, Grub if you're just running Haiku. I just wanted to have a nice uh, dual boot situation going on, and uh, that's why I use that. So we can boot from here, and it starts the very minimal Haiku loading screen bootloader thingy and it straight drops me into the desktop environment so let's wait for it there and there we are um, so let me adjust things and uh, yeah so as you can see a very minimal desktop now I would have run this on say a virtual machine and I would have run this on uh, captured it over you know a proper uh, video file rather than com capturing over my phone but I really wanted to have a realistic um, demo with it running on an actual hardware rather than a virtual box so we are stuck with this um, more importantly, if you can see here, the first things that usually happen with an experimental OS is not everything works, especially things like Wi-Fi, more specifically things like 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Uh, but in this case, it is working just fine. So if I click this, wait for a few seconds, it connects to my 5 GHz Wi-Fi uh, and there it goes. So and it gives a pretty good speed as well. So. Uh, it has a, its own uh, web browser and you can see I have installed a lot of apps and we'll go through some of them uh, but it has uh, its own web browser which is pretty okay uh, very minimalistic uh, I was trying to get uh, some of the FPGA tools built uh, but there are issues uh, so I might might not work towards it and you have your file system here so you can just open up stuff the um, the file structure is pretty different from a uh, general uh, GNU Linux box so it's new and you kind of have to get used to it. The main interesting bits was that Mesa 17 is now working although it's not exactly uh, you know hardware accelerated there's no DRM driver for Intel drivers or there's no DRM driver at all they have a very basic video driver for all the GPUs they support that gives them enough to have something drawn on the display uh, and not uh, interact with the you no know, actual shaders and and the and the GPU stuff the graphic processing stuff just the display output uh, but they are running Mesa on LLVM pipe uh, which is their software renderer which then allows us to do cool things and run OpenGL apps uh, that were once designed for Linux especially if they are based on SDL they just work uh, you might need a minimal uh, you will need to recompile them of course uh, with minimal uh, code change so for example I have GZ Doom running on it uh, and all I have to do is go to the install directory and then give it the iwad file uh, config uh, 
and it will start to run and you can see here uh, on the output it says GL vendor is VMware uh, and GL renderer is Gallium 0.4 LLVM 7.0 and 3.0 uh, Mesa 17.1 um, yeah so it's working pretty well uh, and uh, other few I was hoping to get GL Mark working, but GL Mark requires X11, or it requires DRM, or it requires stuff that isn't available on this platform. Um, so there's no like SDL option. They used to use SDL at one point, uh, but they don't anymore. So I mean, you've got DOM working on, on OpenGL, but the OpenGL stuff is, since it's software rendering anyway, so the CPU usage is still high, but the gameplay is fairly, uh, fairly smooth. Anyways, um, and then you have some more games like Open Arena doesn't work for some reason, it requires some modification in its code um it spits out a weird error uh we have dos box which was running earlier so this isn't something new but you know it used to crash a lot uh, haiku in general used to crash a lot but it's now working fine uh we have never ball which is like a rotation based game kind of thingy uh i mean I i'll show you what i mean so so again, this is running on the uh, software renderer. It's pretty smooth, again, uh, using Mesa's LLVM pipe uh, software renderer. So, I mean, the only thing that's missing right now is to write a DRM driver and then Mesa can interfere, uh, interface with that and have proper hardware acceleration. Uh, and someone will do it at some point, as people usually do so one of the more interesting things is uh someone ported the kde libraries over so you have a lot of kde wo apps working as well so here you have color paint uh krita both of them are working so i can open krita first and which is a, a pretty decent uh photoshop photoshop's like open source replacement and that works really well and we have color paint that works as well so that opened up the other thing is that the system monitor here is pretty interesting uh, it's a little applet and then you can go ahead and see memory usage you can see threads and then from there uh, you can actually uh, go ahead and see what all threads are actually ac active and how much cpu they are using uh, per like per app uh, so yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so all of this works just fine. Uh, you have, I think, uh, M player is all supported, so you can play uh, playback videos. So let's do that in a second. Um, you have Bluetooth working. I mean, all of this. So of course, Qt is also supported. So you have Qt apps working, uh, which also leads to. Qt GL apps working, so that will work just fine. Um, yeah, let's let's play back some videos. Let's install M Player, and uh, so let's do it through the package manager. Uh, you can also do it through uh, through the command line. You can using pkg man, but let's just take a look at Haiku Depot. So select that and install. That will take a while and it will install all these dependencies uh, and apply changes. And in that moment we can actually go and download. I'll use another browser this time. And we can download the Big Puck Bunny demo. So another interesting note is that they switched the alt and control keys so alt f4 is control f4 alt tab is control tab control v is alt v and control c is alt c so that takes a lot 
of uh, getting used to and being frustrated for a while but anyways so again this browser is based on qt uh, just fyi uh, and we will go ahead and download so over at haiku depot i think that is installed so we can close that and open up a simple right so while that is going on what we can focus on is another thing that you can actually compile the operating system itself from within the operating system so it's pretty uh, well bootstrapped in that manner uh, so you don't have to depend on any other OS to cross compile although you can use things like BSD, Linux and OS X to do it they have all the tools there uh, but uh, it's it's still fine if you uh, actually want to do it or using the Haiku itself which is interesting so I'm going to that directory yep so it takes about um, takes about an hour to build and an hour to build just the the build tools the compiler and all so build the build tools first then the OS takes about two hours on this machine which is not a very fast machine um, so it's dual Pentium laptop thingy it's not super fast uh, but it gets the job done so you can see it's it has started to build the bootloader uh, the uh, build tools there so I mean you know it's not going to sit here a couple of hours to show the build process but that can be done um hmm, still on 22 percent so yeah i mean it's pretty stable the only reason i'm it's this not a daily driver yet for me is basically just the lack of x11 and now that has been discussed for a while uh is that do you really want to port x11 and uh, xorg and then make it act as every other system out there or does it you know take away from the nicheness of this project because to be honest it, this project is alive because it's kind of niche and unique uh, on its own and that's kind of my thought around it they were also talking about having the Linux kernel instead of the BE kernel that they're using right now the BE based kernel they are using which again will take big time for, take it away from the nicheness of the project and it will just be like a BE compatibility API layer API running on uh, Linux and that you know that kind of makes it less attractive than an entire operating system written from scratch uh, based on a older operating system and that's what it kind of is but I do think either port Valent which might make more sense because it's more recent and it has a much um, newer code base a newer style newer thought process for you know graphical user interface x does get old really soon so you know port vlan to it and that would make a lot of apps work but then to port vlan you actually also need to port x uh, because vlan has a x compatibility mode so i'm not sure how that will work out but if that happens then uh, it opens up a lot more uh, opportunities there yeah i mean it's stable enough right now it runs gcc8 uh, this is the 64-bit version that i'm running so sadly it doesn't have compatibility with the older uh, be app which the 32-bit version is kind of focusing on uh, but the x64-bit version is a bit more advanced in terms of you know uh, being more recent uh, whereas the x86 version is mostly designed to be you know backwards compatible with stuff so you know they're still running i think gcc2 and gcc4 in hybrid mode and uh, this one's already on gcc8 uh, this one already has the mesa driver and all of that good stuff so one more thing i wanted to try was to try and get youtube working on the uh on the web browser here uh and see if this works yeah alt v oops the 
the minutia fine it only goes up to 720p which is probably limitation of the browser and I can go full screen which only uh, let's see okay yep there we go so it has a nice full screen mode you can still see the tab so this is more like F12 and now it has gone proper full screen so this is kind of impressive and new it didn't used to be like that like you couldn't run a video at all back in the day so you can do that now uh, which is interesting and happy as well uh, open file and uh, it was this one yep hey that works so not the best performance but it's working and I cannot quit for some reason there you go so it like, plays in a separate weird window kind of a way but it's fine so it's, it's working and that's the point uh, that things are working now things are stablish now uh, some polishing needed here and there uh, some features being needs to be implemented um, while we are at it and this can be a pretty decent OS even for daily driver use uh, you know I don't mind that happening at all so thank you everyone for watching I'm not sure how short or long this video is going to be thanks for watching make sure you subscribe do the bell icon thing and what's what else did YouTube introduce I don't know have bookmark my YouTube channel or you know set it up on your home screen or something like that I don't know YouTube's weird these days Right, thank you so much for watching once again and I'll see you all in the next one.